For me, Norwegia is mainly state of the Nordic region. Uh, the overview of uh, economic development, uh, demographic development, and uh, employment in the Nordic region actually since the 1980s. I think that is uh, the, the really the strength of Nordregio to have this enormously uh, usable database with hard facts. I mean, there is a lot of other things that are important for how regional development is going on, but it's important to also have the, the, the hard facts behind it. And there, I think, when developing the regional potential index was also very important for, for that, so you can compare the development between different regions. When I started in 2013 as director, and uh, went out on conferences and things like that. A lot of people who I didn't know all, uh, at all approached me with a lot of uh, positive and said a lot of nice and positive things about Nordregio that uh, I hadn't thought about so much before, but then I suddenly realized that is something special with that institution. And I think that Norwegio, in a way, uh, makes it uh, is an implementation of the Nordic way of leading organizations or management or things like that. So I think that uh, there is, with this uh, flat organization, with uh, young people coming in and out with a, so to say, a, 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 a limited time period. You are not staying here and growing steady, so to say. You, you have to develop, you have to learn all the time. And, and it's, uh, I think that the organization and the atmosphere makes people grow very much. I see it quite bright. Uh, I think when I started in 2013, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, Nordic cooperation was not that high on the agenda, so to say. Uh, uh, Nordic Council of Ministers were cut, was cutting uh, the, the budget of its institutions and so on. So, so it was not so very positive. Then came The Economist with uh, a special issue on the Northern Light and how the Nordic economies had uh, handled the economic crisis. Uh, with a lot of credits to the Nordic, and they called it the, the, the Nordic model or something like that. And uh, that started, as I see it, a kind of a period, time of period, when uh, the, uh, the, the Nordic cooperation was uh, more and m had more and more importance. So, so we had a lot of uh, progress during a long time period until the pandemic came. <laughs> and then all crashed, more or less. I mean, the, uh, uh, that is, uh, and not least the Nordic institution and the Nordic Council of Ministers as organization. Uh, was not, so to say, trusted from the political system enough to, to play an important role, a role that they, we could have played, actually. Uh, so, um, uh, so that was really low time, uh, all, all time low position, actually. Uh, but now the borders are open again. 
So I mean, I mean uh, that is the first and the basic uh, prerequisite. And uh, I think that also the, the geopolitical uh, situation today has made it uh, more uh, obvious that the Nordic countries should work more um, uh, together in order to, to be strengthened in different ways, not only from a defense perspective, but also others. But of course, the, the Swedish and Finnish NATO applications is part of this, that there is more focus on the Nordics. So, and hopefully, uh, I mean, uh, with a new uh, Secretary General, hopefully that person will work hard with the organization internally not least with his or her own staff in Copenhagen actually and to to to, to build a much stronger uh, Nordic Council of Ministers including its institutions uh, than it uh, used to be but I'm uh, I mean you should be uh, we should be optimistic that uh, such a person a new Dag Hammarskjöld actually comes into the uh, Nordic Council of Ministers as Secretary General and uh, starts that process. Good. Thanks. <laughs>